The Earth is a dynamic place and is constantly changing. Sometimes fast, sometimes slow. But if we know where to look, we can see its history written in the landscape and also get a glimpse into the inner workings of the Earth. A great place to start is by looking where the inside and the outside of the Earth meet, at a volcano. This is where professor and volcanologist Dr. Ruprecht from the University of Nevada, Reno, and his graduate student Jacob Scheel are conducting research to better understand the inner workings of our world. Follow along with us as we venture into the field at Lassen Volcanic Park to collect samples with them. This is a day in the life of a volcanologist. Hi, I'm Philip Ruprecht. I'm from the University of Nevada, Reno, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Geological Sciences and Engineering, and I'm a volcanologist. Our day began early as we hiked towards the site of an old volcanic eruption. So we're today here in uh, Lassen National Volcanic Park, um, just to the northwest of Lassen Peak, which is behind me, uh, on an area that is called the Chaos Crags. Um, this is an area that uh, had an eruption about a thousand years ago and produced multiple kind of do dome-shaped uh, extrusions that we want to study. So we have six different domes here at Chaos Crags that were in a short sequence of eruptions, at least that's the idea, a thousand years ago, that they were erupting within maybe a few decades. What we want to understand is by having six different eruptions, we can basically take different snapshots in time on how this magmatic system changed. And in particular, we want to look at these domes um, to understand how magma chambers get changed prior to an eruption in terms of how they heat up before the eruption, how they potentially get more activated, right? And so we do this by looking specifically at one type of rock that is found within these domes, and that those are called mafic magmatic enclaves. These mafic magmatic enclaves are a kind of rock called basalt. But before they were solid stone like you see here, they were new, very hot magma that came into an existing magma body and potentially triggered an eruption. They are key to understanding this volcanic system. So we have some mafic, uh, mafic magmatic enclaves here. And so they are compared to the rest of the rock, which is light in color, I'm sitting on most of this, which is day side. They are rocks that are more magnesium rich, more iron rich. That's why we call them mafic. That typically means that they're coming from below, from deeper in the crust, feeding this system. We're looking specifically at crystals within these mafic enclaves. The crystals in many ways are taking note of the climate of the magmatic system here. So when the crystals grow inside this rock, they also are responding to any changes in terms of temperature. They will change their composition as a result. And we can measure that compositional change over the course of these six eruptions. This is going to be a nice sample. This will be interesting. Very different. It may tell us a totally different story, but that's how it is. Did you get sunscreen on your head? In theory, yes. Okay. <laughs> but it could also be red because of. After a long day of collecting samples, we began the arduous trek back to camp. Turn to camp after dark using headlamps. Yeah, that sounds great. I mean, it will I be. thought we were having lasagna, but I'm, I'm glad you made this. Easy to do pasta. Yeah. It works. Yeah. And after a creative lasagna dinner, we settled in to get some much-needed rest. The next morning, Dr. Ruprecht's colleague, Dr. Mike Gardner, shared some special army blister care secrets with us. Oh, it feels like it's gonna work. 
which oh, involved it's, duct tape. It's one of those miracle things. <laughs> Great day yesterday. Collected some samples from Dome A and Dome B, so from um, the lesson Chaos Crags, and we're heading out today to now go to some of the later eruptions, Dome E and F, and uh, yeah, it's another beautiful day out here, and uh, will be fun. After another day of hiking and collecting samples, our field work was done. But the research is far from over. Being out in the field is only one piece of the volcanology puzzle. Dr. Ruprecht explained some of the reasons why this job is so special. It's the combination of being in the field, which is lovely, obviously, uh, to be in places like these this year. But then at the same time, of course, it's also going back into the lab and, and sharing that knowledge also with the students and with the public to really explain how, how a volcano works and what the processes are that are occurring you know, deep in the earth that we don't have really a good access to. We can't drill into a volcano and so as a volcanologist we need to kind of um, get there by, for example, looking at crystals that basically were there at the site of where all the action happened, and then we can read in that record of these crystals. And so I like the being outside, but also really apply rigorous physics and chemistry. Now that you've spent a day with us on the volcano and have gotten to peek inside the lab where all of those physics and chemistry concepts are put to use, what questions do you have? What stood out to you? And most importantly, how do you think we can use science concepts to unravel the inner workings of our Earth?